on the last time we was talking, we was talking about this music campaign. What you got going on with this music going into 2022? Well, it's like it, it be one problem after the next. So when we was talking about it, I was real determined. I was real, you know, then boom, my grandmother died. Yeah, I seen that. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry that, to hear that. I, thank you so much. But that just stopped like my whole what I had going. It, it knocked me completely off track still to this day. But I managed to drop a new hit with your boy CJ called Come Close. All right. Streaming on all major platforms in 14 days. You know, I got like 8,500 streams so far. Um, So it's doing numbers or whatever. I also have um, this dude, Seven Wall Shorty, put me on a the culture tour. I'm at the store. Oh, yeah. it's, it's a tour with um Mulatto, Future, um, the girl Kill and like the Migos and stuff like that. So I got blessed with something like that. I'm gonna be opening up for them. I'm not a part of the concert, but I'm a part of the opening act. But still, it's a major. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. That's good. You you, you um, campaigning. Exactly. So that's just that's about all the good I have going on right now. I'm trying to put myself back together, push myself back together, you know. And focus on Viney. Just focus on Viney and what I have to do to further myself and my career. Like, get, I got rid of all my distractions to where I'm able to focus. I moved around into a new environment to even promote myself bigger. Right. Um, it's my city because my city and surrounding areas are already on lock because I, done, I could say I actually been there. Right, right. So, you know what I'm saying? It's it's okay to just be there, you know, once or twice, or maybe even a couple of times when I just feel like when you want more for yourself and in this career, this stage, I just feel like you have to go out and explore. Yeah. yeah. I, hey, let me ask you this, you know, before you even go too deep in that exploring category, name me one great person that you know. I'm not saying that people who don't move around is great. But most people that's great and successful in business, they don't stay in one spot their whole life? No, they don't stay in one spot, and they definitely don't stay where they came from. No. Like, a lot of celebrities don't live in their hometown. A lot of celebrities can't, unless you want to be, you know, God rest the day, young dog. I feel like when that story finally unfolds, like mine, it's going to be somebody close to you. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that feel like, oh how we come from the same place and we don't have the same thing or, you know, or somebody that feel like they're obligated to your blessings. Or it's just, it's just going to be someone that was in his, that could touch him like that. So, so I do you feel this was like, you know, it was a hard decision because I, I could have stayed at home, but the shit I was dealing with and facing, I just feel like it was the right decision. If I wanted to prosper and flourish you know, and evolve and elevate to a certain part of my life. Like, I had to leave everything and everybody behind. Right. And I feel like it was a great move for me. Like, you know, for me. Do you, feel like, you, more, do you feel like you mentally more at peace and mentally more stable since you're in a whole other yeah. environment? When I go home, I just be so scared. When I go home, it's because... You know, and I had niggas, like, run down on me. People robbed me. People breaking in my house. People coming in from my door, breaking in my car. It's so well, when I go home, I got to go home. And, like, a, I rent a car to go home. Right. You know, switch my car and stuff like me. And you talked about or whatever. And I just, like, changed my whole way of thinking and living. Because it do be people playing you close. They'd be the ones because they feel like everybody feel like they're obligated to a part of what you got going on and they don't go like that. Like, I don't feel like I'm entitled to your blessing. Like, I right. feel like you want to bless me with something, it's on your heart, you do it, but it's not forcible. You know what I'm right. saying? So, but I just, you know what's you know what's good about that? Like, that's something that I had to learn and older people told me like how all that stuff was going on and you just took the leap of faith and you just got away. It said, God give you warning signs before destruction. Yeah. So if you don't seek them, you know, that situation or whatever the case may be, you never know what'll happen down the line. You know what I'm saying? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think it would have been tragic for me down the line if I would have, you know, stayed. Um, I just think that, yeah, like I just felt it. I actually saw it. So I know it would have been bad for me. Um, it was like even certain people, like I was just so scared. I was just reaching out to people. I just felt like that's not a place I could have evolved in. Like it's just so negative. Even when you're trying to stay positive, in a negative is really brain frying. Um, it 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 makes you depressed. Like I say, it's not the world, it's the people in the world that can drive you fucking crazy. Right, right, right. Do you nothing, but it's like that's a place where I can't I couldn't flourish. So I'm glad I love. I'm glad. I'm glad I feel like now it gives me a start over. Like when I first came out as an artist, it's like shit I had to do out there. I feel like I don't have to do as much work because I have too. So it's still just to let people know that I'm out there. Like I got to pop out, I got to do certain stuff, I got to promote myself, promote my brand. So what I like it's kinda like starting over, but I just feel like a fresh start. It it's not gonna be so bad. It's yeah. not it's not gonna be bad. I feel like it's gonna work out for you. And then you in a whole you in a much bigger market now, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times, you know, we love our city, we see the city and, and see Yeah, the I love the city. I love my city so dead. I love the people in the city. I love the way they support me. I love the way they rap my songs when I'm not there and they send me videos. Like I love them because without them I feel like I wouldn't be known to where when they search New Orleans Bounce, I'm one of the artists that pop up because of my city. Right. And it was like, you know, my city made me. And every time I go somewhere, I make sure I put on for my city. I don't give a fuck who I make. I'm putting on for my city because this way it come from. This way right. I So, yeah. So, like, as far as the... All right, now you see you got a new song. <laughs> yeah, a new song called Come Close. Um, I got to wait. Before you go to that Come Close, so you that mean that sharing and all those other songs you're not you're not working on no campaigns no more um i'm working on them because they are my hits those like those those are the songs that took me far those are the songs that made me well i want to say if anybody could say they made viney i would say it would have to be sissy Novi. sissy Novi gave me my first hit we can't take that back um, you know, I paid them for my music or whatever. I respect all my friends' hustles just because we friends. That don't mean, you know, us being friends pay your bills, uh, you know, fulfill your needs throughout the day. Um, so if I could, you know, actually say Nobi was the one that really invested time into me. Nobi had me going to Esplanade Mall to the booth when I couldn't find nobody to record me. He like, look. Go on Esplanade Mall. They got the in the studio in there's a little booth. You're going to go in there, say your vocals, put it on a CD, bring them to me. So he broke it down for you, bitch. Nobody did it for me. Yes. I, he the, came uh, in a live yesterday. I had to give him his flowers. You heard me? Yeah. And I, I have the utmost yeah. respect for Sissy Nobi. Um, and like I feel like he another artist that's supposed to be so far, but it's like his life, you know, life burdens people to where they can't focus on you know fully focus on what they're supposed to be focused on right um, so yes i would definitely say that i would i would i'm still going to campaign them songs i campaign a lot of songs but where i get my performance list from is my soundcloud because i go to some call an insight and whatever is being played the most that's the song i get on stage and perform um, you know, I don't start promoting a song or performing a song until it hit like over 300K, where I feel like people will know what I'm rapping at the time. But anything that's like, my song's probably at 100K. They all probably start at 100K. But if you're not over three to five to really start promoting it, to get it out more, um, I won't perform it. If you're between five to seven to nine, then yeah, those are considered my hits. Like, right. I go off of what's played to know what to perform. Do you have any, um, so do you have a team or is, this, is it just you for no, the most always been me. Um, every time I try to work out with a team, 
it never really works out because to me, like I'm the manager, the promoter, and the artist. I feel like if you're not going to invest the time, like I'm investing it to myself, what do I need you for to take a percentage out of my money? Maybe, yeah, sometimes it's good, it's good to have a team. I'm not saying it's not, but I'd rather be self-made. Sometimes teams are better. Um, like, I just feel like two artists working together is always better than one because it's two different sides of fan base being combined to where y'all will blow up faster. Right. But, you know, you by yourself being independent, we got to take the stairs because the elevator too crowded. So we have to walk up those stairs and we have to, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, keep your faith, you know, sit down, meditate, on like me before I make music I meditate I could go pay somebody to record a song for me and I won't ever perform the song like I have a lot of music I don't perform because I feel like as though it's not a hit it's not if I just feel like me now every song have to top the last song in order for me to perform it right you know what I'm saying so, that, makes, that makes sense yeah so if, if, I just, if I just feel like if the streams don't, like, say, for instance, how CJ just made this song. This song is, like, 14 days old. And it's already at, like, 80, 8,300, 8,500 plays. And just in 14 days, so I know this song is going to be my next hit. If I just stay on top of it and then start promoting it, like, as my intro before I go into, you know, because I like the freestyle. I'm a, I'm a, I make music to where I can perform it on stage. I'm not like, yeah, I project fast music and stuff like that, but I cannot rap project fast music. I have to be a lyrical artist with bars, you know, to actually rap, to stop for my crowd to rap for me. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of rap I am. I'm, I'm you know, as I grew, I switched my sound, all type of stuff. So for me, I'm just doing, I just, just basically do what's best for me when I feel like it will work. Well, look, I got a question. You know, since you have songs like Share It and the other song that you're working on, do you ever think about, you know, this is just a question, do you ever think about, like, getting features from artists that's in bigger markets, feature an artist, like, you know, like, imagine if you put yeah, somebody... But, like, I feel like me, in order for me to make it, because it's just me. I'm willing to go to the city girls and pay them $10,000 for a feature because it's marketing. Um, right. In this music, a lot of people feel like, you know, everybody entitled to helping them, which I am, but I just feel like if you want it, you have to go and get it. Like, I would rather want to put myself out there like I told you and already be made. For when somebody come grab me, they be like, oh, her shit together. She ain't even got nobody behind her. It's just her and this bitch. So a person that's dangerous by themselves, just imagine how dangerous they'll be with somebody that's actually will put them in a position to become a millionaire superstar celebrity. Right. So I just feel like me, yeah, I have thought about like, say for instance, I'm a lotto, got that song, Big Dick Energy, you know, right. I, my song with that dick B, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's yeah, I have mastermind on artists. I know what artists is that I plan on going and grab this year and ask for features and stuff like that. To where, like, I'm going to drop a bag on myself before somebody even think about investing a bag in me because it's like, if I could do it myself, what do you have to offer to me that I don't have access to? You know what I'm saying? Other than me being on a label. I feel like I don't want to be entangled into a label because my favorite artist is Money Bag You. Right. And look, that's the good thing about being, the good thing about being in Texas dependent like he really is my motivation like you know what i'm saying because he come from basically where i come from i listen to his music i listen to his pain and every verse of his music so everybody thinks side bitches come from me talking about a bitch but money bag you'll have a side bitch song and if you listen to the lyrics in his song you will know this is where her fucking song come from right it, a man it was a response to like money bag or a petty response but at the same time you know what i'm saying he gave me the motivation to keep going like in like what's his name um 
fuck two chains. That man didn't get famous until he was 34 years old. Dropped seven tapes and he just kept going. Like it, everybody have their own time frame of when this gonna happen, that gonna happen. And like I said, it's just me. So it's gonna okay. take but I know what to do and I know how to market to where you know what I'm saying? Um I feel like I could take myself so many places, like through the grace of God, I'm gonna go down this year. My year. all you gotta do is keep going. I seen um DJ Khaled said he didn't get his first real bag, so he was 40. I seen um mm -hmm. like yeah, even, even Steve Harvey, he said he was homeless until he was 38. Yeah. And he's only.